Hello, this is Pastor Rick, and I want to welcome you to the Lectionary Bible Study for this Sunday, February the 4th, which is also the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. We have three marvelous texts from Isaiah 40, 1 Corinthians 9, and Mark chapter 1. But before we dive into these three great texts, join me with a word of prayer. A good and gracious God, your word is the light unto our path. We ask you now to bless our meditations so we can prepare to not only receive you on Sunday, but to give you glory and worship. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. First text, Isaiah 40. You know this text. We read it before every Christmas, before the Christmas season and Advent. Comfort, comfort ye my people here. Isaiah is speaking to those who are already in exile in Babylon, and they're struggling, they're away from home, life is tough in exile, they suffered, they've suffered, they lost loved ones, and now God comes, which is often considered second Isaiah, he comes and speaks in this word of comfort. Now that text is always read in Advent before Christmas, but if you read on in the chapter, that's what we're reading today, 21 through, verses 21 through 31, and here there are four big messages. First, God is big. So people are wondering, where is God? Okay, I'm suffering, does God care? So he starts in answering, I have to say God is big. He's standing over the circle of the earth. Basically that the world is surrounded by this big bubble of water and God stands above it and is looking down over all of God's creation. And Isaiah says, we're like grasshoppers. I mean, God is so big, which makes us so tiny. That's point one. But of course, if I hear that message and I'm in exile, then I might conclude, oh, I'm tiny and insignificant. I'm a grasshopper. To that, Isaiah says, no, God actually cares about all of God's creation. God even knows and has counted and named all the stars. Now, of course, this is brilliant. Hard to see sometimes in Naples at night because of all the light pollution, but if you've ever stood outside on a deep, dark night and looked at all the stars, I mean, the whole sky is lit up. You can't count them. That's how many stars. And so that's Isaiah's point. God's named all one. He knows all the stars by heart. Then he makes the third point. God loves his creation. You're part of God's creation too. God cares about you. God sees you in exile. God sees the pain and the suffering you're going through. And so then he turns it personal and says, God not only sees you, God wants to give you strength. Those who are faint, those who are stumbling, those who can't make it, God wants to strengthen the powerless. And that's his fourth point then. He just waxes eloquent with his poetry. God will renew your strength. And he'll do so like the eagles. He'll raise you up on eagles' wings. And he talks about the youth. Even young people get tired, right? Even young people get tired. So it's not just about those who are, you know, are walking with walkers and, and need two or three naps per day. No, he says everybody grows faint, even the young, but God will renew your strength. And so the summary of this beautiful text, this is one to read, and a few of the verses are good to memorize. That God, the creator God, he sits above the earth and he numbers the stars and he strengthens the powerless and he will strengthen you, so trust him. Even young people get tired, but those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. That's a beautiful text. Those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. God will raise them up on wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So when we grasp Isaiah, then we can understand Jesus in Mark chapter 1. Because Jesus is going to raise up the powerless, those who are weak, those who have suffer with demons, uh, those who have a disease. Mark starts out the gospel with Jesus' healing ministry. And then it gets very personal. He's with Simon, Simon Peter, and his mother-in-law is suffering. And so Peter sees that Jesus heals, so he takes Jesus home with him, shows his mother-in-law, who he says has a very bad fever. And Jesus goes, and it, it's a very intimate. He reaches out his hand, and he raises her up. That's Isaiah. He raises up the powerless. He raises up the faint. He puts them on eagle's wing. And to make that point, the text says, she immediately gets up, 
and she serves them. She goes back and does the work, I guess, of a mother-in-law in the house, uh, brings out the coffee and cookies or whatever she did, but she served all those guests. The disciples, then it says, are so amazed by this, they start going around all of Capernaum and the surrounding area and saying, oh, you gotta come and Jesus will touch you and heal you. And that's how the text ends with Jesus healing. It uses the term they there for disciples. And what that means here is we have the two pairs of brothers, Simon and Andrew, who are brothers living in Capernaum, and then James and John, the sons of thunders, who live in Capernaum. The one disciple living in Capernaum who's not mentioned is Matthew, the tax collector. We'll talk more about Capernaum in the sermon. Capernaum is this major city. Uh, it's got a Roman garrison there. It's an administrative capital because it's right there on the lake so it's on a trade route from damascus to egypt and so the tax collectors were there as sort of the toll booth for all traders moving across the lake which is why matthew uh, is present there in the garrison and so we have fish merchants we have uh, we have fish fishing merchants and farmers all centered in this town this was jesus's hometown this is where he centered his ministry. He did more miracles here, did more teaching. In fact, many of the miracles, the stories you know from the Bible that happened in Galilee happened in Capernaum. In fact, so much happens in Capernaum that at the end, Jesus pronounces a curse over three cities and Capernaum is mentioned. The curse was to Chorazin, Bethesda, and to Capernaum because he said if any other city had seen all the miracles and teaching that you've seen me do here here in my home city well they would have come to faith our third text is from first Corinthians uh, 9 here is a very different theme from Isaiah and Mark uh, here Paul talks about his ministry and he says basically I have a call so shame on me if I don't uh, perform my call with all zeal and commitment and he said, I take my call of preaching the gospel so seriously that I'm not even going to take a salary because I don't want my salary to get in the way of my ministry. Now, he nuances it and says, now, I deserve a salary. They should pay me for my ministry of proclaiming the gospel, but I'm not asking that because I want to preach the freedom of Christ freely <laughs> without encumberment of salary. And then he goes on to say, well, I'm doing some other things, too, to help my ministry. For the Jews, those under the law, I'm going to become under the law. I'll live as a Jew. But for the Gentiles, on the other hand, who don't live under the law, I will not live under the law. For example, I'll eat uh, with them. I'll eat unkosher food. I'll live in their homes, be in their home, which would have been forbidden under the, law, the Jewish law. But then he nuances that further. He says, yes, okay, I'm living under the law as a Jew, but of course, I'm, not, I'm free in Christ. But then when I live outside the law as a Gentile, oh, I still live according to the law of Christ. So he's making all these nuanced arguments describing his ministry, that he's trying to be all things to all people to proclaim the gospel. I think which is a challenge to us to say, what, how are we doing that at Emmanuel? What are we doing to put ourselves in the strongest possible position to proclaim the gospel in this time, at this time, and in this place? So I hope that you will look over these three texts for Sunday in preparation for our worship, Isaiah 40, 1 Corinthians 9, and Mark 1, and that we pray that God would bless your reflections and our worship on Sunday, that indeed God would once again take us deeper in faith. Thanks for joining us for this lectionary Bible study. Bye-bye now.